We're sitting here with Jay Freeman. Jay, of course, is responsible for Cydia and uh, a lot of uh, the work that's gone into iPhone jailbreaking over the years. So, Jay, first, thanks for joining me. Appreciate Thank you very much, much for having me. So, a lot of people are asking us, where's the iPhone 4 jailbreak? So, I actually don't develop the iPhone 4 jailbreak. Um, while I'm involved in its construction, the jailbreak is developed by a guy named Comex, uh, right. along with Planet Being and Muscle Nerd. So I'm not really certain what the release schedule is. I definitely can't comment on that. But it exists. But it does exist, and I have a jailbreak and iPhone 4 on me right now. So uh, they found a, an exploit to be able to take advantage of, get in there and jailbreak the phone. I, I hear it didn't take long. It was done pretty close to the release date. It was done very close. Um, so actually, one of the advantages of um, Apple using the same software on all these devices is that if you already had a hole on the previous device, if you just kind of keep it secret and wait for the device to come out, you can be in there very quickly. That's right. I remember one of the 3GS updates they were talking about. Uh, they wanted to hold on to it until the, the code was finalized for the, the 4 because they were hoping that that uh, hole would still exist. So they were able to, to reuse it and take advantage of it. Yeah, I'm not, not certain if that's the same hole because I don't remember that exact story. But right. I can say that uh, I mean, when the new device comes out, typically a jailbreak can be very quick. It's um, Major new firmwares can cause issues only when people aren't sitting on anything. Got it. And so right now it's a manual process. You had to go in through and actually do quite a few things uh, manually to get this done. But uh, of course, don't want to show those, don't want to expose what's happening. Yep. But uh, the result is we do have a jailbroken iPhone 4. And uh, can you just take us through briefly and show us what it's all about? All right. So you've just finished jailbreaking this particular iPhone 4, and you're going to show us uh, Cydia running on the device. All right. So first so, off, flip it over. Show us that it's an iPhone 4, because it could be an iPhone. There we go. So that's an iPhone 4. It's got the bumper. Yeah, here's the uh, wonderful antenna gate there location. Yeah. There it is. All right. So, slide to unlock. I've got Cydia on it. Let's run it. Load data like Cydia is wont to do. I've seen that screen before. Go here to the Cydia homepage. It's going to load up. Give us access to you know, all of our current information. Go here under Changes. See a long list of packages that are available for installation. Just everything the city is normally able to do, all available here now on the iPhone 4. So one of the challenges I think a lot of people that jailbreak their phones have when they do, of course, release a, a new version of the software and then it gets jailbroken is that some of the applications don't work right away when you first uh, jailbreak it. So I would imagine we're going to have some of the similar issues that uh, we've had in previous jailbreaks where some software may not work properly right out the gate. Is that true? That is correct. Um, a, a lot of the developers uh, are getting access to jailbreaks around the same time the users do because there's no real way to get a jailbreak to a developer and not have it end up in the hands of 100,000 users just a couple days later. I can imagine so, so there's um, there's definitely difficulties with getting applications ported to especially new devices, but even just new firmwares uh, when they, directly when they come out. That said, um, a lot of the core functionality that people are expect, a lot of the things from either Sorg IT or Big Boss are typically available very quickly. Um, but even then, sometimes a few little things can catch up something. And currently, anything that involves a signature authentication response, very technical term, pretty much just means talking to Apple and saying, I'm Jay, uh -oh. not Bob, yep. uh, is having a little bit of issues. Um, something that should be very simple to fix, we just haven't been able to do it yet um, because we've been working on all of the user interface aspects of the jailbreak, trying to make it all simple. Is, but this, with that, is that a phone home for Apple? I mean, are they going to be able to tell that the, jail, the device is jailbroken? Well, that's not a phone home for jail for, for Apple. I mean, now, I'm not necessarily going to say that they don't know that these devices are jailbroken, um, but what we are talking about is that some core functionality, like the App Store will, like, one-third of the time decide to not let you download an app, as will iBooks, uh, FaceTime is a little bit sketch, um, but all of these things will be fixed before the uh, the iPhone comes out, because it really comes down to just a single, a single thing we have to nail. Got it. And we don't know when that's going to be, but uh, sometime in the near future. Yeah. So I've seen several places online that are selling iPhone 4 jailbreaks. Of course, that's not legit, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So the... Uh, the jailbreaks are always free. I mean, I can't necessarily say the jailbreaks always will be free because jailbreaks come from random parties. Um, but all the people who are currently involved in doing jailbreaks have a strong commitment to the software being free. Now, that said, you may, for example, choose to um, find a company to do the work for jailbreaking your phone. Uh, frankly, I don't really understand it because most of the time it's one button. Um, right. some, of the, some of them are a little more difficult, though. And in the case of the ones that are more difficult, you may, it's totally reasonable to pay $30 to get your phone jailbroken. Sure. But if you're just downloading an application, um, you're doing it wrong because you can just get it from our website. Right. And when that application opens up, it basically gives you a huge warning that says, if you paid for this, demand your money back because yeah. this is free software. Yeah, so that's that's typically something that is done in all of the ones from the iPhone dev team. I'm a member of the iPhone dev team, but I do not actually develop those jailbreaks. 
Do you know all of the members of the dev team? I mean, do you know who they are and what their real names are, or do you know them uh, mostly by their uh, online names? I don't think anybody knows who all of them are uh, <laughs> and all their real names. I've met a couple people from the iPhone dev team, uh, specifically the ones that tend to go to conferences, uh, but I have many of them I have never met. They're from countries I've kind of never visited. Don't speak their languages. Yeah, well, I mean, well, luckily they speak mine. So. Okay, thanks again for joining us. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. An extended interview with Sark, Jay Freeman, will air Saturday, July 24th in Los Angeles on KNX 1070 at 1 p.m. and San Francisco on KSFO 560 at 3 p.m. Download the podcasts after the show at makeitworkradio.com.